Hello everyone, welcome again in Engman YouTube channel. So today we are going to continue our pressure transient analysis episode. And today's video will be short. It's specifically talking about partial penetration. Okay, so I, I found this picture and I think it's this picture is quite good to represent the configuration of partial penetration phenomena. And if you're interested, you can read this book. All right, then let me change to pointer pen first. Okay, so especially if you have thick reservoir, it is quite rare if you penetrate or open all the thickness of the reservoir, especially if you have thick reservoir, okay? Because it will be too costly if you have to perforate all the thickness of the reservoir. That's the first reason. And also you need to remember that in reservoir, maybe we can have gasket and aquifer bottom water. So in many cases, we do not perforate all the thickness of the reservoir because if it is closer, if it is too close to the gas cap or to the bottom water, it will, it will lead to water conning or gas cusping gas conning something like that okay so i find and maybe you can find as well that in many many instances people only perforate a fraction of the thickness of the reservoir okay but if you have very thin reservoir yeah maybe just several feet something like that yeah you can perforate all the thickness of the reservoir especially if you don't have gas cap or if you don't have aquifer bottom water something like that but again in many cases we only do partial penetration we only do limited and limited entry because we do not want to perforate all the thickness of the reservoir okay so what is partial penetration suppose we have reservoir with thickness of h okay yeah let's say Forget about for a while, forget about the gas cap, forget about the bottom water. We just do not want to perforate all the thickness of the reservoir. Okay, so we only want to concentrate or we only want to complete the, the well with perforation interval of this HW. Okay, the engineer, the company opened the perforation here at this step. Okay, you can see. And yeah, may or may not you have below packer there, but in many cases you will have packer there. Okay, so it's production tubing and then packer and then the completion or the perforation. And yeah, you can have packer again and then whatever the, the string, the, the extended string below the packer. Okay, but it is not very, you know, it's not very common. Yeah, in, in many cases, you have tubing and then packer and then tubing again until the end of the tubing. And then below that, you have perforation. Okay, and below the perforation, you have red hole. Okay, so this is the configuration of partial penetration. So you only partially penetrate your software. You do not perforate, you do not open all the thickness of the reservoir and if you have flow and later on it will lead to parse a uh, pressure transient analysis issue okay if you have flow either positive flow you you just flow you do the drawdown or if you do shut in okay there will be three flow regimes at established the first one the earliest that occurs is actually radial flow. Okay, so it's radial flow, but it is very, very short. Okay, it, it happens almost instantly and then just ends, just stop and change the flow regime to the next flow regime. Okay, so the first thing is flow regime, radial flow here. So radial flow will be developed when you do the flow or when you shut in your well the first flow regime that is developed 
is actually radial flow. The flow towards your wellbore is of radial shape. Okay, here. And suppose you can capture that very short period of time and you do perform pressure transient analysis, you will have average horizontal permeability, but at this area only. Okay, at this very, very, very short drainage radius. Okay, you can see my cursor there. There, the area in which very short radial flow, the first radial flow is established, you can analyze the permeability there. Okay, but after radial flow, yeah, in most cases, this very short radial flow will cannot be seen because it is masked by the wellbore storage phenomena. Okay, so radial flow, the pressure transient, you cannot see in your pressure transient analysis because most of the time, okay, it will be masked by wellbore storage phenomena. Okay, and then after radial flow, due to partial penetration, you will have spherical flow. Spherical flow, if you have your perforation there, at the center between the top and the, you know, between two, be, between the top and bottom, if you have the perforation there, you will have spherical flow. But in other case, if you have your perforation interval a little bit up there, closer to the top, you will have hemispherical flow instead of spherical flow. Okay, so spherical flow if you want to make a 3D shape of it, it will be like ball, spherical, but hemispherical flow, it will be like half of a ball like that. Okay, hemispherical. So the flow will be directed towards the arrow. Okay, spherical flow. So yeah, the, 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 the flow shape will be Will, will will be like spherical shape, like a ball. And if you perform pressure transient analysis, and let's say if you can capture the spherical flow phenomena in your well test plot, in your pressure transient analysis plot, and you analyze that, you can derive or you can get information like permeability anisotropy, KVKH. Okay. And sometimes, if you read the literature, you can also get spherical permeability. Hmm, it's interesting. Okay, spherical permeability. Okay, yeah. You may or may not find your spherical flow. Okay, because again, wellbore storage phenomena, especially if the wellbore storage phenomena takes too long period of time, spherical flow will be masked. But if the Wilbur storage is short, yeah, you can see the spherical flow. Okay. And again, you can capture per permeability anisotropy from it and also the spherical flow and also the distance, okay, the actual distance from the mid perforation or from your perforation down to the bottom of your reservoir. Okay, so maybe uh, you just determine the bottom of your reservoir, maybe from seismic or maybe from log, something like that. But this will validate that. Okay, the distance from the perforation down to the bottom of your reservoir can be interpreted from the pressure transient analysis if you have spherical flow. Okay, and later on you can you can validate the thickness of your reservoir. Okay, and last thing, after the spherical flow, after the spherical flow ceases complete, you will find a bigger size radial flow. And this radial flow comes from all the thickness of the reservoir, not like this one, not like the first radial flow, which only come from this HW. Okay, and come just from this very short radius. But this radial flow is developed, okay, 
by the all the thickness of your reservoir and the flow will come from the far field okay the flow will come towards your well bore from the thick all the thickness of your reservoir and from areas that is quite far from your from your well bore from the center of the well bore from the perforation okay so you will have radial flow there and if you interpret if you evaluate the pressure tension analysis from the radial flow section you will get very important thing which is of course horizontal permeability again and you can also get the skin okay later on you can you can calculate you can estimate your skin okay oh yeah this one spherical flow can also give you skin due to partial penetration or geometric skin you can also call it sg okay skin due to you know geometrics of your well and here you will have total skin and then of course the horizontal permeability and from the permeability in anisotropy and your horizontal permeability you can derive or you can calculate your vertical permeability okay so far so good and of course lastly if you test your well long enough if you flow your well long enough or if you shut in your well long enough you may or may not find your boundary but it is not depicted in this picture it, it is not drawn in this picture but yeah let's say you can detect your boundary something like this okay maybe fault or maybe pinch out or maybe other permeability barrier something like that you can detect and you can evaluate you can estimate the distance from your well bore to that boundary if you flow or your if you shut in your well long enough such that the pressure transient the pressure propagation can reach that point okay so yep i think that's all i hope you enjoy this video i hope this video is useful thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next pressure transient analysis video Thank you.